Hello everybody. Today I'm going to read The Wizard of Oz. This is dedicated to a very dear person to me, the amazing and beautiful Lily. Lily, if you ever can't sleep now, a good night story is just a click away. The Wizard of Oz by Frank L. Bourne Chapter 1 The Cyclone Dorothy lived in the midst of a great Kansas prairies with Uncle Henry, who was a farmer, and Aunt Em, who was the farmer's wife. Their house was a small, for the lumber to build it had been carried by a wagon for many miles. There were four walls, a floor, and a roof, which made one room. And this room contained a rusty looking cooking stove, a cupboard for dishes, and a table, three or four chairs, and the beds. Uncle Henry and Aunt Em had a big bed in one corner and Dorothy a little bed in another corner. There was no upstairs at all and no cellar except a small hole dug in the ground called a cyclone cellar where the family could go in case of one of those great whirlwinds arose. Mighty enough to crush any building in its path. It was reached by a trapdoor in the middle of the floor which a ladder led down into the small dark hole. When Dorothy stood in the doorway and looked around, she could see nothing but the great grey prairie on every side. Not a tree nor a house broke the broad sweep of flat country that reached out to the edge of the sky in all directions. The sun had baked the ploughed land into a grey mass with little cracks running through the earth. Even the grass was not green for the sun had burned the tops of the long blades until they reached the same colour to be seen everywhere. Once the house had been painted, but the sun blistered uh, paint and the rains washed it away. Now the house was dull and grey as everything else. When Aunt Anne came to live, she was when Aunt Anne came there to live, she was a young, pretty wife. The sun and wind had changed her too. They had taken a sparkle from her eyes and left them a sober grey. They had also taken a red from her cheeks and lips. They were also grey. She was thin and naught and never smiled now. When Dorothy was, a, was an orphan first came to her, Annie M had been so startled by the child's laughter that she would scream and press her hand upon her heart whenever Dorothy's merry voice reached her ears. And she still looked at the little girl with wonder that she could find anything to laugh at. Uncle Henry never laughed. He worked hard from morning till night and did not know what joy was. He was also grey. From his long beard to his rough boots, and he looked so stern and solemn and rarely spoke. It was Toto that made Dorothy laugh and saved her from growing as grey as her surroundings. Toto was not grey. He was a little black dog with long silky hair and small black eyes that twinkled merrily on either side of his funny wee nose. Toto played all day long and Dorothy played with him and loved him dearly. <coughs> Today, however, they were not playing. Uncle Henry sat upon the doorstep and looked anxiously at the sky, which was even grey than usual. Dorothy stood in the door with Toto in her arms and looked at the sky too. <coughs> Aunty Anne was washing the dishes. From the far north they heard a low wail of the wind, and Uncle Henry and Dorothy could see the long grass blown in waves before the coming storm. There now came a sharp whistling in the air from the south and they turned their eyes to what they saw ripples in the grass coming from that direction also. Suddenly, Uncle Henry stood up. There's a cyclone coming, Em, he called to his wife. I'll go look after the stock. Then he ran towards the sheds where the cows and the horses were kept. Aunty Em dropped her work and came to the door. One glance told her that danger was close at hand. Quick, Dorothy, she screamed. Run for the cellar. Toto jumped out of Dorothy's arms and hid under the bed and the girl started to get him. Auntie Anne, badly frightened, threw open the trap door in the floor and climbed down the ladder into the small dark hole. Dorothy caught Toto at last and started to follow her aunt. When she was halfway across the room, there came a great shriek from the wind and the house shook so hard that she lost her footing and sat down upon the floor. A strange thing happened. The house whirled around two or three times and slowly rose up through the air. Dorothy felt as if she were going up in a balloon. 
The north and south winds met where the house stood, and at the exact centre of a cyclone, in the middle of a cyclone, the air is generally still. But the great pressure of the wind on every side of the house had raised it up higher and higher, until it was at the very top of the cyclone, and there it remained, and was carried miles and miles away, as easily as you could carry a feather. It was very dark, and the wind howled horribly around her. But Dorothy found she was riding quite easily. After the first few whirls around, and one other time, when the house tipped badly, she felt as if she was being rocked gently, like a baby in a cradle. Toto did not like it, however. He ran around the room, now, here, there, barking loudly. But Dorothy sat quiet on the floor and waited to see what would happen. Once Toto got too near to the open trapdoor and fell in. At first the girl thought she had lost him, but she soon saw one of his ears sticking up through the hole. But the strong pressure of air was keeping him up so he could not fall. She crept to the hall, caught Toto by the ear and dragged him into the room again. After closing the trap door so no more accidents could happen. Hours after hour passed and slowly Dorothy got over her fright. But she felt quite lonely. And the wind shrieked so loudly all around her that she nearly became deaf. At first she wondered if she would ever be dashed to pieces when the house fell again. But as hours passed and nothing terrible happened, she stopped worrying and resolved to wait calmly and see what the future would bring. At last, she crawled over to the swaying floor to her bed and lay down upon it. And Toto followed and lay down beside her. In spite of the swaying and the wailing of the wind, Dorothy soon closed her eyes and fell fast asleep.